Just my thoughts about the Tejas Mark 1 and Mark 1A for the Philippines, July 2022. Please like and share the video, and subscribe to the channel. This is just to continue my series of fighter aircraft that are being offered to or considered by the Philippines, and in this video I will share my thoughts about the Tejas Mark 1 and 1A aircraft by India. The topic of the Tejas being offered to the Philippines came out again a couple of months ago in the Indian press, and then the Philippine Air Force chief reiterated again that the main contenders for their multirole fighter program was the JAS-39 Gripen and F-16 Viper. So now the Indian press is saying that the Tejas had already lost out to those two aircraft for the Philippine Air Force. But the Air Force had been saying their choice of the Gripen or F-16 since at least 2019. But anyway, I thought that it is still worthwhile to discuss the Tejas since it does seem to have its own merits as well, as I will try to explain later, again just a disclaimer, these are just my opinions based on the facts that I am able to gather on my own at the time that this video is made. I will be putting links in the description showing where I got some of the information that I used on this video. I will start with the Tejas Mark 1A which is a new version of the existing Mark 1 aircraft with improvements like an active electronically scanned array or ESA radar and a new self-protection jammer, among other things. This model though like the KF-21 Boramay hasn't flown yet, its prototype was supposed to have first flown last March 2022, but they missed that and rescheduled it to June 2022. But missed that schedule again. Delivery for these version to the Indian Air Force is supposed to start in 2024, so one question here is since there is a big difference from the current version, would India allow us to be among the first users of the aircraft alongside their Air Force? And even if they do, would we want to be so? Assuming the answer to that is another, yes, then if we order them now, we can expect them to start delivering these to us also around 2024 if there are no delays. However for me personally, to be on the safe side I think is better for us to wait and see what happens by 2024, and then make an order only by, say 2025 or 2026 if everything goes well. Then allowing two years for the manufacture of the aircraft, we can start receiving these by 2027 or 2028. The Tejas Mark I itself also had a slow development compared to its contemporary aircraft like the T-50 and the JF-17 Thunder, all these three aircraft first flew within several years of each other, but the T-50 and the Thunder now has a lot more aircraft in service and has been exported already also. The Mark I is available now, though it is in a low-rate production for the Indian Air Force. Because it is already existing now, then I assume that if we order it this year, we will start receiving the aircraft two years later by 2024. The Mark I has the same engine and radar as the FA-50PH Fighting Eagle aircraft we are currently operating, so we can expect it to have around the same performance in those areas also. However, the main difference between the Mark I and our FA-50s is that it has a lot more weapons and equipment available to it coming out of the factory, likely in part because it was designed to be a fighter aircraft from the start unlike the FA-50 which is mainly an advanced trainer with secondary combat capability. And probably also in part because I think that the American company Lockheed Martin which jointly developed the aircraft is intentionally delaying the further development of the FA-50 so it won't end up competing with their precious F-16 fighter aircraft. The Mark I for example, already has the ability to carry beyond visual range or BVR and high off-bore sight missiles, something which will only be available to the FA-50 coming out of their factory several years from now. The Mark I also now has true anti-ship missile capability in that it can carry and launch the KH-35 and KH-59 MK anti-ship missiles whose ranges are at least 100 km and up to almost 300 km at most. Compare this with the FA-50 whose anti-ship missile capability right now straight from the factory is limited only to the American-made AGM-65 Maverick whose typical operational range is only around 22 km. And I am also not sure what type of anti-ship missile they are planning to integrate into the FA-50 next. Other manufacturers are offering more advanced weapons and equipment to the FA-50, but these comes with additional costs and some complications as I plan to discuss in another video. The KH-35 and KH-59 MK missiles though are made in Russia, so that might be a factor to consider for the Philippines as it could be the first time for the Philippine Air Force to use Russian-made weapons. So despite having the same engine and radar with the FA-50, the Mark I has significantly better combat capability than the FA-50. 
As for restrictions, the engine is made by the United States so they will have the same possible restrictions as the KF-21. In terms of the source code, I am not sure if India will allow us access to it, but since they seem so eager to export their military equipment they might just allow us access, giving us better ability to integrate weapons and equipment into the aircraft should we desire to do so. In terms of price, the chairman of Hindustan Aeronautics Limited said in February of 2022 that their target price for the export of each Tejas Mark 1A aircraft is only around 309 crores or 39 million United States dollars using the exchange rate of 79 rupees per dollar. If that materializes then even if we conservatively add in another 10 million dollars per aircraft for training and some logistics then that still is a very good price of only 49 million dollars per aircraft. With our current budget of around $1.15 billion for our multirole fighter aircraft, we could in theory buy around 23 aircraft. The Tejas Mark I is even cheaper, India recently ordered a two-seat version of it and it only cost them 280 crores or $35 million. Assuming that will be the price also of the single-seat version of the Mark I now and add in the usual conservative figure of $10 million per aircraft for training and some logistical support and that is only around $45 million. Or a total of 25 aircraft for a budget of $1.15 billion. So to summarize, I think the Tejas Mark I-A is an interesting prospect for the Philippines because of its good combat capability and very reasonable price, but has been encountering delays and I think it would be better for us to watch and see first how well it goes with its planned deployment with the Indian Air Force. The Tejas Mark I is available now and still offers significantly more combat capability than our F-A-50 aircraft despite both having the same engine and radar. It is also quite cheap and it seems we can acquire them quickly. Thank you for watching the video, I invite you again to like and share it, and subscribe to the channel.